Hello traders and investors, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick with NGM Investing. Today we're gonna to be going over how Nokia's stock is a major 5G player and why they are a strong buy in 2020. I'll be going over what Nokia does as a company and what exactly they do. I'll also be providing information about why Nokia is such a strong player in 5G, as well as go over the recent earnings report and explain why I think they are such a strong buy this year in 2020. What is Nokia OYJ? Nokia is a global communications company. And whenever I used to think of Nokia, I used to think of their utterly indestructible phone that you could literally chuck off a cliff and call mama on the same day with. However, a long time ago, Nokia had humble beginnings as a paper mill trading company in 1865. They slowly began to add more industrial sectors into their paper mill operation, including cables, TVs, tires, and of course, what we have known them for, mobile phones and telecommunications in 1990. The company seemed unstoppable, creating the best-selling mobile phone device in 1998 having a stock price shoot up to a high of $62.50 and creating the first camera phone device in 2003. However, its major downfall began when Apple and Android devices started to come out in 2007. Since then, Nokia's share price dropped from $3 to $5 a share and the company has been under the radar ever since. Before my research into Nokia, I just thought of them as a phone distributor or associated with mobile phone devices devices and thought they were out of the game entirely. But to my surprise, Nokia is still in the game and simply just shifted their focus. They are now a 5G company that is focusing on their network hardware and software in order to become a reliable provider. Nokia's goal as stated on their website is as follows. It is to help communication service providers, governments, and large enterprises with the promise of delivering 5G, the cloud, and the internet of things. The internet of things just being a means in which large enterprises, governments, and service providers can make sense of the information they collect. Since then, Nokia has shown that they are sticking to their word and following through with their main goal. They acquired the Franco-American telecommunications equipment provider, Alcatel Lucent in 2015 in order to broaden the scope of Nokia's portfolio and customer base. Through this acquisition, they also acquired Bell Labs, which is a US company that received nine Nobel Prizes and four Turing Awards during that time. This in a large part is the reason why Nokia currently has 3,000 5G patents at this time. Since then, Nokia made other significant acquisitions such as Withings in 2016, offering a variety of awards winning digital health products, Comptel in 2017, which bolstered their software portfolio, as well as many other companies on their website, which is linked below in the description box. Nokia's recent moves includes the acquisition of Alenium Technologies in February 2020, which will address the optical connectivity requirements of 5G, cloud, and enterprise networks. Nokia also just sold their gain speed acquisition acquired in 2016 this month to Fasima Networks for an undisclosed amount. These acquisitions over the years have steadily built Nokia up to become a major full-spectrum 5G provider. However, the biggest event thus far that has propelled Nokia into a position of leadership when it comes to 5G was when the world's leading telecom equipment provider, Huawei, owning 28% of the market, essentially was banned from operating in many countries such as the US, UK, and France. This was due to underlying security issues as in dealing with Chinese companies like Huawei and can be seen in another example today when you look at companies like TikTok. This gave the opportunity for Nokia as well as its competitor Ericsson to be the leading 5G providers in this market. Currently, Nokia has 85 5G commercial deals, 152 commercial 5G engagements, 
and 33 live 5G networks. Nokia's recent deals includes a $450 million contract with Taiwan Mobile, as well as a $3.5 billion contract with T-Mobile in 2018 that has allowed them to become the sole suppliers of these two networks. Let's now go into the recent quarter two 2020 earnings report of Nokia. Reported profit from continuing operations of Nokia in the June end quarter was 85 million euros or one euro per share against a loss of 191 million euros or three euros per share in the year ago quarter. Non-IFRS profit was up this quarter compared to the prior year's quarter being 316 million euros or six euros per share compared to 258 million euros or five euros per share in the prior year quarter. Nokia's overall cash performance and its earnings report rose the share price up 10% in this quarter, with the company's net cash position rising from $1.54 billion to $1.89 billion. Nokia's current total cash position is $8.87 billion with a free cash flow of $313 million compared to a negative $1.18 billion deficit in the prior year's quarter. The upsides of earnings could mainly be attributed to the higher gross profit from Nokia's mobile access within networks, which attributes to 60% of Nokia's overall revenue and has seen greater amount of usage in COVID. Other contributors to Nokia's higher gross profit this quarter include cost saving programs, as well as a net positive fluctuation of financial income and expenses. Some of the cost saving implementations that Nokia has done this quarter include getting rid of older acquisitions that no longer fit in with their 5G goals such as gain speed and also manufacturing a 5G system on chip or reef shark which saves money when creating a RAN product. Nokia has also been relatively frugal with regards to investing in the Chinese market compared to their competitors, which has also saved Nokia a lot of money. However, Nokia's revenue overall was lower compared to the prior year's quarter by 10.6%. And this is mainly due to a lower amount of sales in China, as well as supply chain issues caused by COVID. Nokia's recent earnings report and its recent performance has raised its adjusted earnings per share guidance this year from 27 cents to 30 cents. Its adjusted operating margin target also rose from 9% to 9.5%, which is in line with its European competitor Ericsson. EV over sales and EV over EBITDA ratios also show that Nokia is undervalued when compared to their competitors, Ericsson, and other 5G companies. With the market becoming more and more volatile, it's a great time to pick up a company like Nokia at a great value. So why should you include Nokia in your portfolio in 2020? In 2021, there'll be billions of dollars to be made in the C-band as US carriers start to implement 5G in the mid-band spectrum. Currently, 5G has been deployed in the low band and the high band spectrums by T-Mobile and Verizon respectively. Nokia is the first company to have completed US-based 5G tests in the C-band spectrum successfully. So why is this so significant and why should this be on your radar? Well. If we look at the low and high band spectrums, the low band has a wide geographical range, however, at the cost of speed, and the high band is exactly opposite. It has great speed levels, however, not a wide geographical range. It's quite narrow. So the mid-band range, which will be provided by C-band, which Nokia has successfully completed, it offers a good mesh between wide geographical range and speed. To add to this, recently on August 10th, 2020, the Pentagon announced that it will be sharing its wireless coverage with telecom companies. This wireless spectrum allows companies to offer 5G more broadly across the US when auctioned off and will also generate billions of dollars for the US Treasury. Currently, this wireless spectrum is being used by the DoD as a defense radar mechanism. However, it is determined that it can be freed up without any cost to defense. The situation with Huawei is still present, allowing Nokia to bolster its 5G contracts in many different countries over time. Nokia is creating itself as a one-stop shop for telecommunication needs offering a 5G core and RAN, but also IP routing and optical solutions. This separates itself from its telecommunication competitors such as Huawei and Ericsson as it provides more versatility for its clients. 
Nokia also secured a $12 billion contract with Apple in Viborg, Denmark to update its data systems using Nokia's technology. Nokia's debt to equity ratio is also quite low at 0.45. They withdrew their dividend payouts in quarter three of 2019 in order to focus on their 5G investments, which are beginning to pay off. Because of their recent good earnings and their positive free cash flow, they are likely to restart their dividend payouts as early as 2021 or even earlier as long as their net cash reaches 2 billion euros. At the end of quarter 2, 2020, Nokia's net cash position was 1.6 billion euros. It is estimated that Nokia's new dividend yield will be around 4.9%. Also, Nokia has new leadership in Pekka Lundmark, who is the current CEO as of August 1st, 2020. He is currently coming up with a strategy for Nokia to progress their goals and was the former CEO of one of the top Finnish energy companies, Fordham. He is taking a patient and calculated approach when considering Nokia's 5G vision as he realizes the political landscape that is unfolding. He liked to convey openness and transparency when working with governments and regulators and also provide a spirit of cooperation. It is estimated that Nokia's quarter three in 20 2020 will have more mixed results in comparison to the very positive results in quarter two. However, it is anticipated that Nokia's fourth quarter in 2020 will be very strong as they will begin to see benefits in revenue from their newly upgraded systems on chip. Even then, Nokia indicated before that their 2020 quarter two earnings would be disappointing. However, they were a lot stronger than expected, so anything can really happen. The two things that I see that will be immensely positive for Nokia with time are as follows. First is what I like to call the constant positive. As more and more 5G products are sold with time, and this is a certain thing as we are upgrading into the 5G era, Nokia will be benefiting from every product sold. This is because for every 5G product that is sold, Nokia will gain $3.48 through their licensing fees. The second big positive that I could see for Nokia in the foreseeable future is what I like to call the jump. The stock could benefit immensely through the pivotal decisions of the US government regarding the US 5G Clean Path initiative. This initiative requires the US to pick trustworthy 5G companies to build the US 5G network. Because Huawei is still out of the picture, the US seems to be looking towards Nokia and Ericsson as the front runners to win these contracts. With all of this information, I am very bullish on Nokia as I believe they are removing unneeded acquisitions while also having laser focus when capitalizing on the opportunities the 5G market gives them. They are keeping their goal to become a leader in 5G and RAN, but have also bolstered their IP routing and optical solutions. Their new CEO, Lundmark, also has valuable experience in the energy sector through his work with Fordham. He would also like to build Nokia up into a company that not only creates groundbreaking technology, but also has the potential to change the world. With Nokia continuously accumulating more and more 5G contracts over time and them benefiting through licensing fees and building out networks, I see Nokia as a very strong buy in 2020. I personally invest in Nokia in my own portfolio and hold many different call contracts with them this year. What do you think about Nokia as a company and what are some things you didn't know about Nokia? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching this video. If you could please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications, I'll be coming out with more videos soon. I hope you learned a great wealth of information today about Nokia or the 5G spectrum. And as always, I'll see you soon. Peace.